Hi guys, so if you've been watching a few of my recent videos, you'll have seen me making all these wonderful lovely little sets that I'm going to use for a, well, probably a one-shot D&D sort of game. And it's going to be my version of Gary Gygax's Tomb of Horrors. Um, so yeah, I've been having lots of fun building all these little uh, little sets. And I'm just finishing off the last one, which will be out to see, well, any minute now. Um, and then I'll have all the sets ready for my willing or unwilling participants to, uh, to have a go at. So yeah, I'm really happy with how these have all come out. Um, I, I have loved building these sets, and I've already got an idea for my next sort of lot of sets, um, even though I've not already played this game yet. So the last set I'm building, it's going to be on the back of, of this set. So that's so why I'm trying to combine several sets into sort of one piece that I can then stack away for later. And as you can see, this one's kind of like a, well, it's kind of like a corridor, but obviously most of the floor's gone. So our willing adventurers are going to have to jump from one of these sort of sort of stepping stones to stepping stones and obviously if they miss or fail a dexterity rolling save they're going to end up on the floor on the spikes. I'd already scored in the bricks when I did the uh, the other side just because I knew obviously I was going to make a set this side. So I'm going to have the doors obviously part way up. So I've got this foam packing. I uh, can't remember where it came from but obviously whenever I get anything now with foam packing I keep it all because obviously it's perfect for sort of bulking out sort of sets and for obviously cutting up. So one of my lovely patrons brought me this hot wire cutter, which is pretty awesome, um, as it is obviously nice and wide and just cuts through stuff, well, with ease, basically. I am wearing a mask for this, because obviously it did sort of give off a few fumes, uh, which I'm sure probably aren't good for you, because generally, well, any kind of fumes aren't. But um, yeah, so the hot wire thing cuts through nice and easy, gets things a nice size, and I say I've got loads of this foam stuff, which is going to be seen quite a lot. So that's pretty awesome. So I'd already made up some floor tiles. I, mean, I made these up before I'd made, well, anything really. Um, I practiced sort of having a go at making floor tiles some time ago. So I've got them sitting around, so I'm not actually using them, so I'm gonna be using them for this, which is pretty cool. And yeah, good old Gorilla Glue, you're gonna see me using loads of this in upcoming videos, just because I, I love it. Um, except when you get it on your fingers, it's, um, it's obviously not gonna stick you to something else, but it is very kind of slimy. So as soon as you get it on your fingers, you need to basically wash it straight off, because otherwise it stays there forever and ever. And here we go, yeah, good old grout. Um, yeah, this stuff, I, <laughs> again, I think you're gonna see a lot of foam board, packaging, and grout in most of my upcoming videos, just because it's great stuff to use, and obviously grout's pretty cheap, but it's a great filler and sort of texture, which is obviously what I'm using it for here. Apologies if the screen sort of goes a bit funny every now and then. Uh, I'm not sure what was going on with my phone, but it, it kind of looked like hey, there's a bit of a, a fog or a mist. Um, I cleaned the, the little lens thingy on it several times, tried to change settings, but it, it wasn't having any of it. It just seemed to think I was in a, a foggy room. Not too sure why. But yeah, so back to the build. Obviously, yeah, grout using that for texture, filler, and in this case, a bit of both. Um, so yeah, quite a simple little build, this one. Uh, but I'm looking forward to my adventurers going in this because there are obviously quite a few hazards they're going to have to sort of uh, get past. So again, I'm not um, spray painting this one with a, um, a base coat. I'm using the good old PVA glue and paint. Well, I did notice in one of my previous videos, someone did obviously mention about putting water in obviously to make it uh, well more watery and sort of getting all the nooks and crannies more, which I definitely will be doing next time uh, because obviously the PVA glue is quite thick so when you put the paint in there, it, it does take a long time to paint this, and especially in the other uh, tiles, trying to get it in the nooks and crannies. So yeah, next time I will definitely be using some water in there. And the other thing I love to use in all my builds is my 3D printer. So I've got the Photon Mono X by Anycubic, which is just ideal for printing off miniatures. Um, great quality, and they come out really well. So yeah, awesome thingy. Uh, yeah, links guys, so everything I use, I'll put links down in the description if you want to go and check out what I use. Uh, so yeah, obviously skeletons, we need loads of skeletons. Um, <laughs> I love skeletons, just because obviously they act as obviously dead things, uh, but sometimes they might come alive, which is pretty cool. And then yeah, good old sort of dry brushing, wet brushing, middle brushing. I know people did mention in the other video uh, what it's actually called when you do a brush that's not dry and not wet and I've forgotten what it is without going and having a look. Uh, yeah, maybe like a sieve, guys. Either way, I like doing this kind of brushing. It goes over everything, well, all the top areas, but still leaves darkness, um, obviously, in the nooks and crannies. So yeah, next time I'm definitely going to be using the PVA with a bit more water in it, just so it does flow into all the gaps. As you will occasionally see, 
still a little bit of the pink foam coming through. So yeah, I need to sort of obviously address that with the uh, the watered down PVA, which will uh, work a lot better. So yeah, good old doors that I use. So basically, yeah, everything I 3D print either comes from Thingiverse or my mini factory. Where possible, I will obviously put the links down below uh, if I can. So we've got shields and the little candles. So the shields I actually did myself by just getting um, obviously a sword, uh, making two of them, and then um, getting a shield and putting a back in on the shield. So I did that in some free software that I found online for, for uh, 3D model making. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm quite pleased with that, even though it's very simple. <laughs> obviously just sort of getting some swords and a shield and kind of merging them together. But the end, re end re uh, result is what I wanted, which is pretty awesome. So yes, yeah, so obviously this bottom bit is going to reflect obviously a lot of past travellers, heroes, uh, well, unfortunate souls that didn't quite make it. Uh, so that's why I'm going to have loads and loads of skeletons. But in this case, I'm actually going to glue them to the base, just because I, well, these, these sort of um, set dioramas, as well as obviously using them for a campaign or a one-shot, I do want them to look sort of nice as they are. So that's why, where possible, I will be filling them out with sort of odds and ends, um, just because they look nice. And I like sort of looking at them on my, uh, on my shelf. So yeah, I was actually going to print out spikes, and then I kind of thought, well, that's a bit daft. A uh, waste of resin, and obviously it's going to take quite a while. Uh, yeah, just get some little toothpicks, and well, cut the little suckers up into sharp little points. So that's exactly what I do. Um, yeah, so with, with regards to the 3D printer, um, I do like using it for obviously miniatures and the odd sort of thing, like the, the lamps or the shields. Uh, but where possible, I will try and sort of scratch build stuff out of just general rubbish and bits and pieces. Well, I've got lying around, basically. If you're in a DD and and you've run any sort of campaigns, um, let me know if there's any sort of sets or dioramas that I could possibly make from any of those. Uh, that would be awesome too. As yeah, say I want to make a whole variety of kind of little sets that I can rather use as just a, a diorama, or I can actually use them in a campaign or one shot, basically. So um, yeah. So just adding a bit of paint to these little spikes makes them look obviously even more deadlier, um, as there has been some unfortunate souls that have sort of uh, become foul to these and obviously landed on them. Um, which is pretty cool. So let's hope they make those saving rolls. And yeah, if, guys, if you're like me and you've got a bit of an addiction for dice, don't forget to check out Easy Roll of Dice, link down in the below in the description, and check out their whole range of dice from plastic, metal, stone, and lava ones. Awesome stuff. So that's the build complete, and I can't wait to run this one shot, which I'll be doing in, well, about two weeks' time. Um, I've got some willing volunteers, um, so yeah, looking forward to that. And all going well, I'm then going to sort of get all the software I need so that I can, um, well, basically live stream uh, me playing this with uh, possibly some fellow YouTubers, I think. I'm going to see if there's anyone out there who wants to sort of have a go at this game. And yeah, we'll be doing a live stream at some time in the near future, hopefully. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I just want to say a quick shout out and thank you to all my patrons, as well as the sponsors for helping making it possible for me to sort of keep making these videos and obviously buying the materials I need to build stuff. So, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Leave comments down below, hit the like button, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, take care. Bye for now.